Novak Djokovic, one of the greatest players of all time, is currently playing on one and a half legs at the Australian Open. Yep, you heard that right. The Serb has a hamstring injury, and he's still not showing signs of slowing down. In fact, Novak Djokovic's hamstring injury didn't seem to bother him at all. Andre Rublev beat Holger Rune in the match, and then told Rod Laver Arena that he didn't want to play Novak Djokovic in the quarterfinals. And you know what? It makes a whole lot of sense. No one wants to play Novak. You'd rather be on the other side side of the draw. When he was reminded that Djokovic was not yet in the quarterfinals and he still had to play Alex de Menard, he felt embarrassed and said, oh f I apologize. Even though Rublev's guess was too soon, it matched the odds. Darn, now that's what you call a coincidence. Even though Djokovic was hurt and de Menard had played well recently, not many people bet on the Australian on Monday. Why? Well, it's simple. It's Djokovic. On any day of the week, chances are he'd come out on top. Still, the way things turned out was a surprise. Not because Djokovic doesn't know how to win, but because he did win when he was at his peak. Jim Courier didn't ask Djokovic how he beat him so easily. Instead, he asked why he beat him so easily. Let's talk about the hows and the whys. Djokovic confidently said that he did it because he wanted to, and my man was smiling when he uttered these words. He knew it was rude. Talk about confidence at its peak. Not only that, but he sarcastically apologized to the fans because they didn't get to watch a longer match. But on the evidence of the previous two hours and six minutes, during which he lost five games, it was also the truth. Since 2021, when Djokovic Djokovic won his ninth Australian Open, he's been going hard after the 10th one. He's arrived in Melbourne and been deported without hitting a ball. We all know that story, don't we? This time, he'll be able to stay because the federal government overturned a ban on his visa. Let's all thank the Australian government together. Now, he's even giving up his views on alternative medicine because he takes a lot of pills. No, I'm not talking about those pills, you guys. He needs anti-inflammatories to cover up the pain of the hamstring injury, which is the only thing standing in the way of him completely and utterly dominating on the court. But to everyone's surprise, Djokovic wasn't even sure that he'd hurt himself. He felt nothing. I guess that's just pure dedication to the game. But there's someone who definitely got hurt on the court and felt it. Yes, I'm talking about De Manure. Djokovic was going all out on Manure, and he clearly couldn't bear those shots. When Djokovic hits the ball hard, even the people in the stands can feel it. There's sheer pace and power on the ball that's hard to handle. De Manure's spleen was all over the place, and despite the Australian well-known speed on the tour, it was taken away by a man with one and a half legs, just the serve doing normal things. Part of it must have been in his head because Djokovic had that look in his eyes, the look which is ready to murder you. He even made it look like he was going to kill you with his hamstring by stretching it out. This match was a horror show, not because De Manure was so bad, but because his opponent was simply way too good. Before this, you could have said that Stefano Tsitsipas is the favorite in the men's category. Tsitsipas is better than everyone else right now, but Djokovic is better than him. This brings me to the question, what's the difference between Djokovic and the other tennis players? Djokovic is 12 years older than De Menor. That's a lot of sports, isn't it? At 23, he's ranked 24th in the world, which is three spots below Nick Kyrgios. However, he is rarely in the news. In the game. Work. Hands down. Every single time I play, There's a small chance here. Yeah. Even Australia's wild cards have gotten more praise than the country's most consistent male player, who has beaten Rafael Nadal and Daniil Medvedev in the past two months. And you and I both know that's quite a feat. Before this match, De Menor had never played Djokovic. That could have made a difference because there were some key points in the third set when he tried something new. The Australian. Oh. An incredible exchange, a marathon rally. <laughs> Good reactions from Dimonor. Three games all.
forced his opponent to get close to the net and deal with tricky backspin, which the serve couldn't do on the court. But this was probably the only instance in the game where the 23-year-old outdid the serve. Other than this, Djokovic had him in his palm all game. On the whole, though, he was beaten in almost every way. It must have been very lonely to be on center court with a home crowd, watching as your first serve was returned as quickly as your second, and your chances of making the quarterfinals of a home grand slam for the first time keep getting worse with each point. Sad, right? Dimonor admitted that he was probably close to his best. I mean, if that's the level, he'll undoubtedly win the title. He seemed to be on a different level from the young gun. I'm glad Dimonor got to stay alive. At first, Djokovic seemed rigid and solid, but then he started to loosen up even more and swung the tennis ball easily. It seemed like he could make good shots from anywhere on the court. Obviously, when this would happen, no one would know what to do, except for Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal, perhaps. Isn't it true that their games are always played from beginning to end? Ah, very good. Thank you. Not really. I, I feel like I know everything. Rublev knows who he will play next, and he has good reason to be worried. Djokovic respects his opponent and knows that he's been a top five or top ten player for a few years now. Rublev is somewhat like De Menor. He's got incredible firepower, especially from the serve and forehand corner. Overall, he's just a very explosive player. So I hope this game gives us more entertainment. Fingers crossed. But the win against the Australians wasn't all bright and fun for Novak. He went vulnerable in the interview. After the match, the 35-year-old Serbian started to cry when he talked about his children, Stefan and Tara, who didn't come with him to Australia. This isn't something you usually see from the Serb. Djokovic, brilliance. Absolutely don't disagree with that. It's just that I think it's harder to sit to pass. After the match, Djokovic talked about his son Stefan and how he's playing and having fun. To the father, what's important is that his kid loves what he's doing, whether it's tennis or some other sport. Djokovic just wants him to be active and healthy. Stefan likes tennis so much that he wants to watch every game. To a 35-year-old, being a father of two wonderful little angels is the most beautiful thing in his life. Yes, even more than tennis. Who knows? Maybe Stefan and Djokovic will be able to play doubles someday. There's still a lot of time left for Djokovic on the court, but when Jim Courier asked the serve about his daughter Tara, he really started to cry. He said she doesn't care at all about tennis. She likes to dance and do gymnastics. She is a very pretty girl. Nothing is more adorable than pure fatherly love, right? From his point of view, she keeps him grounded and humble. Djokovic ended the interview by telling us how her daughter is the most precious and beautiful thing he's ever seen. I'm sure I'm not the only one who got emotional at this. The people inside Rod Laver applauded his vulnerability and cheered him on. And that's that. What do you think of the game between the two players? See you in the next one.